The Giants had a really busy offseason, and Hard Knocks is giving us a look inside at it. Hard Knocks allows us to see the NFL from a different lens. There's the training camp version, and then in-season started in 2021. Now, there's off-season, and the Giants are the guinea pig. Episode 1 showed the viewers what to expect, and it was great. The coolest storyline was absolutely Saquon Barkley. He was on the Giants for six years, and Hard Knock showed the discussions the Giants had about trying to figure out whether to keep him, sign and trade, or cut him loose. The Giants had him test the market, and what's funny, Chris Rossetti, the Giants Director of Pro Scout, asked the group if they were sure nobody would offer Saquon a certain amount of money. We now know the Eagles did, and now he's on a division rival on a three-year $37.75 million contract. Being able to see the exchange about Saquon is so cool, especially knowing what happened. Devin Singletary is brought up as a potential signing too, and he did ultimately sign a three-year $16.5 million contract. So we saw how early on he was in consideration. Hard Knocks also shows some discussions about Brian Burns, like what it would potentially take to trade for him. The Giants general manager Joe Shane doesn't truly know Burns is available until he's talking to Bills general manager Brandon Bean at the Senior Bowl. Then the Giants traded a second round pick and a fifth for Burns in a fifth, and he signed a five-year $87.5 million contract. There was also the hiring of defensive coordinator Shane Bowen and Brian Dable making the the decision. There is going to be five episodes of the Giants offseason hard knocks, and there are some very good storylines I'm excited to see, like Daniel Jones. The Giants' future at quarterback is fuzzy. Last offseason, Daniel Jones signed a four-year, $160 million contract extension, but he only played in six games. He suffered a neck injury and later tore his ACL. He did win a playoff game during the 2022 season, but Jones hasn't blown anyone away otherwise. 2022 is considered his best season. He only threw five interceptions, but he only had 15 touchdowns. The Giants' offense wasn't succeeding because of him. He was succeeding because of the Giants offense. Jones really struggled last season when he was on the field. He only threw two touchdowns, but had six interceptions. Tommy DeVito immediately played better. Tyrod Taylor was good too. It wasn't a good look for Danny Dimes. He is the Giants' expected starter. Then Drew Locke was signed to be the backup. He started twice for the Seahawks last season and started 21 games on the Broncos. Then Tommy DeVito and Nathan Rourke are there too. Jones does have a potential out after 2024. So we'll have to wait and see if he's actually a giant next season. The NFL draft is often a big storyline when it comes to Hard Knocks training camp. Instead of seeing how a player transitions to the pros, we'll probably see the process of the Giants actually doing the draft process. And Malik Neighbors will be the focal point there. He went at six at the 2024 NFL draft. He was a guy that Giants likely wanted and were hoping he'd drop to six. He did. Neighbors was a big time prospect after what he did at LSU. He's fresh off 1,500 yards and 14 touchdowns last season. He was a unanimous All-American, catching passes from Jaden Daniels, who went four picks ahead of him to the division rival Commanders. As a sophomore, Neighbors had 1,000 yards. He was incredible, and it'll be cool to see the Giants process after the draft selecting him and what went into it. Then Tyler Nubbin and Andrew Phillips went the next day, and Theo Johnson, Tyrone Tracy Jr., and Darius Muassel, the day after. The draft is such an important part of the offseason, so it'll be really awesome to get an inside look. The Giants were really bad last season. Bad enough to get the sixth overall pick and Malik Neighbors. The Giants went 6-11, third worst in the NFC East ahead of only Washington. It was year two for Brian Dable, and it didn't go well, but year one did. He was coach of the year and appeared to turn around the Giants immediately. Joe Judge was 4-13 in 2021, then Dable came in and went 9-7-1 in 2022. The Giants made the postseason and beat the Vikings in the wild card. It convinced the Giants to give Daniel Jones an extension and keep Saquon Barkley. Essentially, it put off a much-needed rebuild, and now the 
Giants are facing the consequences. It'll probably be a while until the Giants are good again. A lot of the Giants' success on offense will be reliant on Daniel Jones, as per usual, which is not a spot you want to be in. Malik Neighbors should help him a lot, but losing Saquon Barkley is huge. Devin Singletary is the expected lead back. He's coming off of three straight 800-yard seasons, two with the Bills, last season with the Texans. He knows Brian Dable already from their time together in Buffalo. He should be a good tool but he's not Saquon. Eric Gray is set to back him up. He was a rookie last season and only had 17 carries. As for the passing weapons, there are some solid receivers I like past neighbors. Darius Slayton has a ton of familiarity with Jones at this point. He had 770 yards last season, a career high, but he's had 700 yards in four of his five seasons in the pros. Then 2022 second rounder Wandale Robinson essentially played his first full season last year. He had 520 25 yards and third rounder Jalen Hyatt was a rookie last season. He had nearly 400 yards. A few other guys worth pointing out Allen Robinson, Isaiah McKenzie, tight end Darren Waller retired. So expect a lot of Daniel Bellinger, who has 250 plus yards in both seasons since being drafted. Then there's the offensive line. It was worse last season when left tackle Andrew Thomas missed time. If he can stay healthy, it should theoretically improve on its own. Evan Neal has had his struggles at right tackle, but he's still there. Then center John Michael Schmitz is entering year two after he was a 2023 second round pick. Add in two new additions via free agency, both guards, Jermaine Illuminor and John Runyon. It may not be good, but the line should at least be better. Dable will still have his hand in the offense, but offensive coordinator Mike Kafka is still there with him. He had a lot of success as the quarterback's coach for the Chiefs there with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. He's interviewed for head coach jobs in back-to-back -back off seasons now, but he's still hanging around with the Giants, for now at least. There are many concerns when it comes to the Giants offense. It could very well be one of the worst in the league. Unfortunately, you can say the same about the defense too. The Giants adding Brian Burns is huge. The pass rush was absolutely terrible last season, and Burns alone can change that. He had eight sacks last season, the least in a season since he was a rookie. Burns has an insane floor, and you're putting him opposite of Kayvon Thibodeau, who had 11 and a half sacks last season. On paper, the pass rush looks better now. Aziz Ojolari is still a giant, and Boogie Basham is back. It could be an improved group. There isn't much to write home about at defensive end, but Dexter Lawrence mans the nose spot. He's been great, and the Giants added Jordan Phillips there too. At inside linebacker, you have Bobby Okereke, who had 150 tackles in his first season with the Giants. That's why the Giants brought him in. He has 300 tackles over the past two seasons, including 2023 with the Colts. Michael McFadden then had 101 tackles last season. Isaiah Simmons is still there too. He's just such an interesting player. The big concern for the Giants is the secondary. It's, it's really bad. Deontay Banks is probably the most well-known guy. He was a first-round pick last year. He had some good moments as a rookie. The corner opposite him is Cordero Flott. He's entering year three, all with the Giants. Trey Herndon is a good addition, expected to slide in at nickel corner following six seasons with the Jaguars. The starters at corner aren't great, but the depth is really bad. Next man up is likely Trey Hawkins, a six-round pick last year from ODU. Jason Pinnock is at safety still and rookie Tyler Nubbin is currently projected to start alongside him. The Giants also now have Jalen Mills who played in every game for the Patriots last season. The Giants defense is just bound to look different this season and it needs to. Wink Martindale is gone and now it's Shane Bowen running the show. He was the defensive coordinator for the Titans for three seasons under Mike Vrabel and was there three additional seasons prior as the outside linebackers coach. Bowen is now tasked with the impossible task of making a not very talented defense decent. It's a growing year for the Giants. The roster looks pretty different and I'd expect it to look even more different next offseason. But ultimately, it's just really cool to be able to watch the behind the scenes on Hard Knocks.